The International Space Station currently flying 250 miles over China in an orbit inclined 51.6 degrees to either side of the equator. Now we have physical separation. We have physical separation. Undocking confirmed at 11.47 and 50 seconds p.m. Central Time. So one, two. We see uh, the uh, docking interface that uh, clean. How copy? Inaudible. Copy. Okay. Thank you, Don. Don Pettit uh, speaking in Russian to Russian flight controllers, uh, relaying parameters uh, and Soyuz systems status. Once again, uh, the Soyuz spacecraft undocking. The TMA-03M flying free from the International Space Station on docking occurring at 11.47 and 50 seconds p.m. Central Time as uh, the Soyuz and the International Space Station flew 250 miles over China. Uh, nine. Okay, I, I nine. Okay, get five to look at at this point, uh, Alec Kononenko is currently activating the digital autopilot system on this spacecraft for a test of uh, the systems associated with that uh, component. Again, uh, this is a test uh, that was pre-planned, designed uh, to test the system in advance of its use in the future, should it become necessary for a manual docking of the Soyuz uh, to uh, the International Space Station's Russian segment. Stabilization, yes. Go ahead and activate it. We activate stabilization. Yes. We have the message illuminated. Range of five squares. Uh, Inaudible. Ten meters. Ten meters. Uh, make sure that the target is in the uh, OSK, in the center of the OSK. Uh, we're keeping it in the 10 degree range, in the 10 degree zone. Um, Oleg, uh, give us the range for VSK. Uh, four. Inaudible. Okay. Copy. Five zero is uh, about one decimal five uh, squares. Okay, I sent ten seconds for starting. Two and a half squares. Twenty-six. You're listening to uh, Soyuz Commander Alec Kononenko. Uh, relaying data from his digital autopilot system on the Soyuz TMA-03M, again, part of a test to validate uh, the capability of this system uh, for manual dockings in the future. Soyuz in the process of executing a pair of separation burns, uh, small thruster fire firings that uh, will ultimately enable the Soyuz to drift uh, to a distance of about 12 kilometers from the International Space Station for its deorbit burn at 2.19 a.m. Central Time, 3.19 a.m. Eastern Time, the start of the trek home for Pettit, Kononenko, and Kuipers. Are you popping? Yes. Yes, we're approaching the range of 1.5 uh, squares. Yes, we now have echo. Range is 1.5 uh, squares. I am uh, decreasing the velocity. Okay, a hand controller uh, away from myself range is 1.5 squares, which is 45, 45 meters. 
So should I? Should I uh, rotate along? The uh, Soyuz is currently in a station keeping maneuver uh, for this digital autopilot test that Kononenko is uh, providing uh, for the Russian flight control team and the engineers on the ground at uh, the Russian Mission Control Center outside of Moscow. I release. Now you can see uh, the roll maneuver uh, that is being executed by Kononenko. This is in preparation for a second and final separation burn that uh, will uh, begin uh, the ability of the Soyuz vehicle to drift away from the station for the last time. Left on board the station, the new Expedition 32 commander, Gennady Padalka. Expedition 32 now formally underway at the time of undocking. We're ready for the test. Joined by NASA flight engineer Joe Acaba and Russian flight engineer Sergei Revin, who will have the station to themselves for the next two weeks until new crewmates uh, arrive in the form of Sonny Williams, Yuri Malenchenko, and Aki Hoshide. I'm uh, deflecting the to the left, uh, to the stop. When releasing, we have the indication that the PO is operating. Now you can see uh, through the digital autopilot uh, a yaw maneuver that is being executed by the Soyuz. Five seconds. We have depot operation approaching center route to the right for five seconds. We see motion depot operation no longer eliminated. A route for burn. A uh, range. Con con range is a little bit uh, more than a little bit greater than 1.5, whereas maybe a little bit uh, 1.8. We see motion one square of releasing the hand control of the bow operation. Yes, uh, the digital autopilot test by Kononenko continues. Uh, the Soyuz maintaining a, a station keeping uh, posture. A second separation burn uh, and a final separation burn from the station scheduled about three minutes from now. Five seconds. Ten seconds. We see motion down. Fifteen seconds. We see a uh, burn 25 seconds in uh, neutral position. Uh, operation is no longer eliminated. Okay, uh, pending 18. Okay. E-17. Okay, uh, route hand control down, uh, executing. Three seconds. Uh, the bow operation is no longer eliminated. We have completed the test. MCC Moscow, how copy? I copy all. I'm going to uh, bring the uh, docking assembly into the VSCA center. I have uh, 125 or 1.5 squares uh, should be your range. Okay, copy. Antares. This view now coming uh, in your upper left-hand corner from uh, an external camera on the Soyuz vehicle, uh, looking uh, directly at the Rosviet module that uh, the spacecraft separated from about nine minutes ago, undocking again occurring just a few seconds before 11.48 p.m. Central Time, the undocking occurring over China at an altitude of 250 statute miles. Kononenko uh, fired uh, uh, the thrusters on uh, the Soyuz vehicle to uh, back away from the station uh, to a distance of about 50 meters uh, for the uh, checkout of a digital autopilot system on the Soyuz that uh, one day may be used uh, for manual redocking uh, of a Soyuz vehicle to the International Space Station. 
standing by for a second and final separation burn uh, to uh, maintain an opening distance for the Soyuz for to a range of about 12 kilometers away from the station where the deorbit burn of the Soyuz will take place about two hours and 22 minutes from now. Kind of went out of our way a little bit in the pitch. Uh, other than that, I think everything was pretty stable. Right now is about 0 0.8 of a square, and uh, we're backing out. Copy. Meanwhile, down in uh, Kazakhstan, uh, helicopters uh, are en route, uh, part of the uh, Russian search and recovery forces uh, known as Ros Aviatsa. Uh, they are en route from uh, the staging city of Karaganda down uh, to uh, either uh, Jezkazgan, a town uh, to the southwest of Karaganda at a distance of about 460 kilometers where the helicopters will be refueled. Several of the helicopters uh, will be airborne within the next 20 minutes or so from Karaganda directly to the prime landing site. They'll all converge at the time that the Soyuz uh, vehicle arrives uh, under its main parachute for touchdown that is scheduled at 3.14 and 34 seconds a.m. Central Time. And right now, the second separation burn has now been executed by Oleg Kononenko, the uh, Soyuz TMA-03M now drifting uh, to a safe distance away from the International Space Station for the deorbit burn that is scheduled at 2.19 and 14 seconds a.m. Central Time. It now will be a four minute, 15 second braking maneuver to slow the Soyuz down by 115.2 meters per second, enabling it to drop out of orbit for its descent back into the Earth's atmosphere and a touchdown on the south uh, eastern step of Kazakhstan, completing 193 days in space for Alek Kononenko, Don Pettit, and Andrei Kuipers, 191 days on board the International Space Station. Expedition 32 now officially underway on the complex under the command of the first three-time commander of the International Space Station, Gennady Padalka. A square and a half of a 13, this one, three, not, not illuminated, accelerometer not illuminated, repress not illuminated, error per program and is being selected at this time. Mode. RRP program. RRP program. Not illuminated. E1. Go ahead and send that, please. In work. E1. E6. E6 or E8. Uh, V8. I'm sorry. I misled you. Yes, V8. Please send that command. Andre. L2. L2. Copy, L2. Good copy. L2. L18. Did you send that command? Yes. V18. We're passing by ATV, Andre, by the way. So V18 still needs to be sent. Switch over and work. Andre Kononenko reminding uh, his board engineer, Andre Kuipers, who is strapped into the uh, seat to, to Kononenko's left in the descent module of the Soyuz spacecraft to take a look, one final look at the Johannes Kepler automated transfer vehicle that has made it to the aft end of the Zvezda service module. The uh, Soyuz uh, is phasing uh, directly below and uh, behind the International Space Station, ultimately to a distance of 12 kilometers for the deorbit burn that will be coming up about two hours and 18 minutes from now. Almost nothing. Moscow, we're done with closeout ops. Copy. Mm -hmm. Parameters. 166, 167, pressure. And for pressure, 528. Copy. Did you switch Vizier? Yes, we did. Copy. By the next compass, please be prepared to start 
descent and re-entry up. We will be ready. The uh, Soyuz commander, Oleg Kononenko, at the time of landing here in the next few hours, uh, will have wrapped up 392 days in space on his two flights. He flew as part of Expedition 17 four years ago. Kononenko will wind up in 14th place on the all-time list for space endurance. Don Pettit, uh, with the uh, completion of this mission, will rank fourth on the all-time list for most time in space by an American astronaut. His 370 days in space uh, puts him behind Mike Fink, Peggy Whitson, and Mike Fole on the all-time U.S. space endurance list. Andre Kuipers of the European Space Agency completing 204 days in space on his two flights, having uh, flown uh, up and down on a Soyuz flight uh, for the European Space Agency, 11 days on his initial mission back in 2004. Make sure you know um, what to expect. And Sasha, did you uh, watch telemetry during the test? Yes, we did. And? Right now, we're analyzing telemetry that we got. Uh, we uh, think uh, from what we saw through the TV cameras during the separation of the vehicle, everything looks good. And um, preliminary parameters look good for the test. Okay. And was it recorded? Alec, it was recorded. Very good. Oleg Kononenko, the Soyuz commander, strapped into the center seat of the descent module, the center section of the Soyuz spacecraft, uh, receiving uh, good reports uh, from the Russian flight controllers at the Russian Mission Control Center outside Moscow on the uh, completion of that digital autopilot test, once again verifying uh, a component, uh, an upgraded component in the Soyuz spacecraft that would enable a redocking or a manual docking of a Soyuz uh, to the Russian segment of the station. Uh, in the unlikely event of the failure of an automated cores system uh, on board uh, the complex, this would enable a Soyuz uh, commander to manually fly the Soyuz vehicle in for a docking in a much more facile manner than before without the station crew having uh, to tend uh, to the reorientation of the station. Antares, Mission Control Moscow, go ahead. No, actually, it was Gennady calling the ISS flight control room. Soyuz TMA-03M, visible from cameras on the International Space Station as well as the complex, uh, flying uh, over the North Pacific at an altitude of 250 statute miles, both spacecraft uh, beginning a northwest to southeasterly track uh, that will carry uh, the two vehicles into an orbital sunset just a few minutes from now. Standard. Moscow, Antares. Go ahead, Antares. Sasha, can we release the transmit button? Yeah, I think so. Um, let me just double check on that, but I think um, we're good with that, and uh, you can press on for the rest of the free flight uh, with the push to talk button to talk to us. Okay, and uh, we're releasing the transmit button.
the Soyuz TMA-03M uh, phasing away from the International Space Station. In the uh, descent module, the center section, Allied Kononenko, the Soyuz commander flying under the call sign of Antares, which was also the name of the lunar module that landed on the moon on Apollo 14 in February of 1971 with Alan Shepard and Edgar Mitchell on board. The uh, top section of the Soyuz, that bulbous section, that's the orbital module, and the lower section, the instrumentation and propulsion module with the solar arrays. Those three sections will separate in a pyrotechnic uh, separation of the modules at uh, 2.47 a.m. Central Time, about 28 minutes after the deorbit burn. Uh, the separation of the modules will enable the uh, descent module to be reoriented with the heat shield flying first uh, into the atmosphere to ablate uh, or bleed off uh, all of the heat um, that will be generated by the high-speed re-entry of the Soyuz back into the Earth's atmosphere. Atmospheric entry uh, reaching the first traces of the Earth's atmosphere at an altitude of about 400,000 feet will occur at 2.50 a.m. Central Time. That will be followed by the command to uh, begin the sequence of parachute deployments. First, a drogue chute that will deploy. Uh, the drogue chute uh, will cant the Soyuz spacecraft at an angle. The uh, drogue chute, uh, which measures about 24 square meters, will slow the Soyuz down from a descent rate of 230 meters per second to just 80 meters per second. That will be followed by the release of the uh, main parachute covering an area of, of about 1,000 meters. It slows the Soyuz to a descent rate of 7.2 meters per second. The harnesses first allowing the Soyuz to descend at an angle of 30 degrees to expel heat and then shifting the Soyuz to a straight vertical descent. Just seconds uh, before touchdown, of course, you are familiar with the uh, firing of the soft landing engines. One final braking maneuver uh, that uh, will uh, slow the Soyuz down and enable it to touch down on the southeast step of Kazakhstan with the landing site about halfway uh, between the, town, the towns of Jez, Kazga, 